Hello, Kidney Warriors. James here from Dadvice TV, your online kidney health coach. And it's Tuesday. It's 6 p.m. Eastern time. That means it's Dadvice TV Live with me and renal dietitian Jen. Now, for those of you that are new, because we get new people every single week, let me do a quick little introduction of who I am. I'm not a doctor. I'm a kidney patient. I was diagnosed stage five kidney failure and told I had no hope of getting better. But I'm also a super nerd. And I started doing a lot of research and looking at stuff. I was like, hey, wait a minute. I may not have to go on dialysis right away, even though my kidneys weren't doing too good. And I worked with my healthcare team. I worked very close with them. And it included a lot of doctors. And most importantly, a renal dietitian. And I learned how to eat healthy. Not that stuff you learn in school or you saw on TV that's all carb and sugar and all that stuff. No, 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 no. I learned how to use my labs and to adjust my diet to not overburden my kidneys, but still give my body the nutrients it needed so that it could be stronger. And today, a little over a year and a half later, I am now stage three, kicking kidney disease butt, and I don't have a single symptom. Tons of energy, no anemia whatsoever. Now with me today is the other half of that secret formula, which is a renal dietitian. Welcome Jen Hernandez from Hawaii. Hey Jen. Aloha. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everyone who is new, what the heck is a renal dietitian besides the most important thing I think you should be working with if you have kidney disease? Well, uh, as a renal dietitian, I am a first off registered dietitian. So I went to school for nutrition, nutritional sciences, dietetics. I went through my dietetic internship. I passed a nationally recognized board exam to become a registered dietitian. And then after working as a dietitian, helping people with many issues, but most importantly, kidney issues, I also studied up and took an exam, a second exam, to become a board-certified renal dietitian, meaning I took another exam focused all on kidney health and nutrition to make sure that I could really, really help people in the kidney world. So I've been doing this for my job full-time for many years now, and I worked in dialysis in several states. Now I have a full-time private practice. I see people virtually just like this from across the U.S., and in my group program across the world to help people learn more about how to eat plant-based for kidney health. Awesome. And then let's make one little uh, clarification or let's, let's uh, touch up. Let me bring us both up here. Boom. They were both on the screen. Um, during this live call, we've got the live chat going and you guys can ask questions. You can make comments and I will try to pop them up on the screen if they fit what we're talking about. Um, if you have a question, we're going to try to answer those, but there are some questions that Jen and I just can't answer. And those are the ones where you need specific nutritional or medical information. So if you're, if you know, your question is, Hey, my creatinine is 2.52 and my, my BUN is 47. What should I do? Ah, we can't answer those, but that's where working with a renal dietitian who can then look at your labs, working with your healthcare team, those are the people who can answer those specific questions to help get you on the right path to feeling great and kicking kidney disease to the curb. You know, I say that all the time. That's kind of my, my slogan, kicking kidney disease to the curb. I do not have that on a t-shirt at all. I'm gonna You're gonna to, need to. <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to find me a graphic artist or find someone on Fiverr, make me up a nice image and start putting it on t-shirts. I have a yeah, lot of other absolutely. t-shirts I wear, you know, say hope and things like that. And, but I don't have anything that says kicking kidney disease to the curb. <laughs> It is long overdue, James. Long overdue. Yeah. So for today's topic, we got a good one here. We're going to talk about kidney detoxing. And as kidney patients, that's one of those things we actually run across early. When we get diagnosed, we start searching on Google. There's all sorts of pills claiming to, to detox our kidneys and to flush them and stuff like that. Um, there's all sorts of different diet things they say. If you look up there, say, eat this, drink this, do this, and it can detox your kidneys. And I'm gonna tell you guys the truth. I pretty much just brushed it all off. I was like, my doctors never told me, James, 
you better look at detoxing your kidneys or you need to detox your kidneys. So I just pretty much ignored it completely. But we've got a smart person here. We've got Jen and she's going to help shed some light on the truth of detoxing your kidneys. And I'm not sure exactly where to start. So here's what I'm going to ask you first, Jen. What is detoxing your kidneys? Well, really what it's about is it's kind of a marketing ploy. Uh, people are really, really good about picking up on your biggest concern, your biggest fear, which is your kidney health. And we know the kidneys, the whole purpose of the kidneys is to help in filtering out toxins. So there's this thought process of, oh, if your kidneys aren't working, those toxins are collecting, therefore you need to detox your kidneys. And it's a lot of these really bright and flashy words that will get your attention pretty quick because you think, oh, well, my kidneys are damaged. I have toxin buildup. I need to therefore detox my kidneys. Mm -hmm. But really the case of it is, is that there's not, there's not necessarily such a thing as detoxing kidneys. It is again, just the, these very, very kitschy marketing words, marketing ploy that people are selling something with this concept, but not proven results. So I, I just want you to keep in mind whenever you do come across something that claims it'll detox your kidneys, first of all, you always want to look at the evidence, but also if there's evidence, but also <laughs> good one there. <laughs> I mean, and, and I, you want to see, oh, yeah, I did some research over the weekend to try to get a little bit up to speed to have some, an idea of some questions to ask. I thought, wait, maybe I'm completely wrong. And this is something I should have been doing. Uh, and I did find a few things are like guaranteed to help blah, blah, blah. And I dug into them to see, well, what research are they using to determine this? And there was nothing. Mm -hmm. um, now go ahead, go ahead. I, I cut you off right there, but you know that was a good well, point. Look at the research. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if they don't have anything on there, it's totally within your right to contact the company and say, "Hey, I would love to see the research that you have that's proving what you're saying." I, the FDA, the the Food and Drug Administration, there is no regulation when it comes to the supplements and, and cleanses and everything. So they can say whatever they want. They're not going to get in trouble for it. And they'll have that big disclaimer at the bottom that says, you know, it's based on whatever happens to you is your fault. It's not on us. You chose to do this. That's, that's their disclaimer. And there's nobody regulating these companies. They can say pretty much whatever they want. They have those disclaimers to protect them. They just want to sell their product. So be sure to ask. If you can't find the information, ask. I did um, I did a research project for some supplements in my uh, senior year of my undergrad. And I wanted, I can't even remember what the supplement was, but it was with um, it was with a national chain of, of, of a supplement store. Mm-hmm. And I was looking up some claims of their store brand and I reached out to them and I said, Hey, I'm, I'm writing an article on this for, for school. And I would really like to learn more about it. I'd love to see the research that you have that's proven X, Y, and Z it's proven these things. That's what you're saying. And they got back to me and they said, no, sorry, we cannot share that information. Whoa, 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 whoa. Red <laughs> flag. Woo, woo, right? woo. <laughs> Can't share so, the information. Yeah. I mean, if you're trying to say that it's going to do this, that, and the other, and it's going to solve everything and, you know, yep. wouldn't you want to advertise that information? Wouldn't you want to share that information to say, Hey, look what this has done. Exactly. That's very interesting. Cause I, you know, it's somewhat related to that. So I live, you know, I recently moved, well, kind of recent, two years ago, I moved to a, a place in Cincinnati, Ohio and three doors down is a lady who works for Procter and Gamble, because they're like walking distance practically from where I live. And she is one of their research scientists who has to prove the statements they make. And she's in an area for anti-aging. So like the soaps and the creams and all that. And her and I had a great conversation and they are so careful with every statement that they make that they have the data to back it up and that they even do their own research to validate that, yeah, this will soften your skin, this will reduce wrinkles and things like that. 
Uh, and not that I, you know, get a sponsorship or anything for Procter & Gamble, but guys, I use their products <laughs> and they have helped my wrinkles, especially below my eyes and up here. <laughs> but it was all because of her. She told me, I asked her, which one should I use? She told me I've been using them and it's been great. <laughs> but if somebody did not have the, the data to back it up, if I called them and they said, no, we can't share that. I instantly Isn't that's that a no blowing yeah <laughs> it's just it, I just it, it really it shocked me too as a student to think wow I mean I am I am actively going out there researching this not for myself necessarily but for just to understand better about the supplement mm -hmm. world and really all it proved to me was that there is no regulation there and, is and you're putting it in your want. body it's not like yeah. soap that's on the outside this is going in you yeah oh. and oftentimes what you might see too for some of those disclaimers is that they'll say that they're actually speaking to people that are healthy individuals and they'll say, um, you know, this is not advice for people with renal conditions, which you go back and think, okay, well, wait a minute. I'm looking for a kidney, a kidney cleanse tea, yeah. for example. Therefore you would think a person who's looking for this maybe has some concerns about their kidneys already, but then their small print is, oh, it's not for people who have kidney issues. Mm. It's like, well, if somebody doesn't have kidney issues, are they focused on their kidney cleansing? Like, is that it, the the marketing there doesn't make sense? Yeah, right? they're just they're you're using small print to sell stuff, and yeah. then they have something yeah. to fall back on to CYA if they get in trouble. Exactly. <laughs> so we've talked about this uh, before in past. Um, in past uh, chats, James, there's a great article from the National Kidney Foundation, and it lists out the some of the herbal words, like the ones that you really want to avoid or be mm -hmm. careful of. And it's a really, really great article, easy to read. It has different categories of different types of herbal remedies that you want to look out for. And this, to me, is something I send out to clients all the time to serve as a reminder of you know, if they are interested in supplements, I'll just say, okay, well, just read this. Make sure that none of this stuff here is included in any of your supplements because they do have a really great, uh, they have a really great category that says no matter what kidney condition you have, if you're post-transplant, dialysis, early stage, anywhere on the spectrum, you should not have anything in this category. Yep. And so one of those is nettle, and I've heard a lot of oh. things about nettle tea, stinging nettle. And it's one so, of the list, it's one of them listed on the do not have. My doctors told me so when I was in the ICU diagnosed with with kidney failure and they wanted me to go on dialysis, and we made an agreement I would get labs daily. If I got back down to GFR 10, I'd go on dialysis. And they gave me a list of a few things not not very many but a few things not to ever eat because um, it would hurt my kidneys there was star fruit which is a, has a neurotoxin and damaged right. kidneys can't get rid of the other one was black licorice it's similar it builds up doesn't take very much to build up and cause problems mm -hmm. and nettle tea they said you're going to find that in a bunch of pills claiming it will help your kidneys it will bring you right back here in a heartbeat yeah yeah. There was even an article that I came across that focused on kidney cleanses and it said, oh, you should drink this nettle tea. And it's very helpful because it helps reduce inflammation. But again, they are talking about the general public, the general population. Yep. They're not talking about people who have kidney issues, that this could be damaging. And another thing that I would advise to be cautious of is some of these articles, uh, and James and I were talking about this just before we went live, some of the articles have affiliate links and oh, yes. an affiliate link <laughs> means that the writer, the company, whomever can get a percentage of a profit if you click that link and buy something through them. Now, I, I do have affiliate links on my website. They're only for products that I personally use and recommend to clients and my clients use and recommend as well. So yep. it's always something and you probably I mean, some of you who watch my cooking shows, the last one I did last week. I talked about my Instapot and I, and I was pointing at it and it's, I, I use it all the time. And that's something, for example, that I have as an affiliate link for something I recommend, but yep. there are some websites that will put up affiliate links and recommend products that they have no experience with, that they 
have, have nothing to do with anything. They are just hoping that you click that link and buy something so that they can make money off of it. And that's business and, and everything. But, um, I, I get really cautious when people put out recommendations of things like this that they mm-hmm. don't understand. <laughs> yep. And especially, especially in this whole kidney detoxing world that they're saying, Oh, you should try this. And it's like, well, but there's no evidence. There's no, you know, they pulled an article, but it's nothing to do with, uh, kidney issues. It's talking about like general people. And it's also talking about a different topic, not related to, well, not directly related to kidney health. So I would just say, be careful about those kind of things. Make sure, make sure you, you know, and trust, um, the company, the, the writer, make sure you really trust them. Yep. And, and I've used affiliate links a few places in some of my descriptions, but as you guys know, who have watched me for a while, um, this is not my job. I have a full-time job. Um, one day I would love for this to be my full-time job and travel around and speak and meet people and, um, inspire people to, you know, look at nutrition as medicine. But, um, you know, the affiliate links I use, um, um, I actually participate in the Amazon Smile program. So if you guys, there's not very many on my site. If you were to like order a book, there might be like 40 cents or 45 cents at a referral fee that I get. It actually goes to the Smile program, goes to charity on through Amazon. Um, they do not have a charity for kidneys. So it helps pets because that's my second favorite charity. <laughs> it's helping pets. <laughs> Oh, that's really, really great. Now, so we've talked about kind of how a lot of these things out there, it's just, it's marketing gimmicks or trying to take advantage of our desire to find something that can help us. Um, And a lot of times people, you know, they see something in a bottle. I'm not gonna show the name of this one because it's a good product. (laughs) They see the uh, something on the bottle and it says helps your kidneys, it boosts it, and they buy it and they start taking it without talking to their doctor or their dietitian. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, is there any such thing besides all these these the fake things out there? Is there any real detox or cleanse or things that we can do that kind of help our kidneys? Uh, I say the number one thing really is to make sure you're adequately hydrated. And this means, yeah, this means different things for different people, especially in the kidney world, right? Because people who are on dialysis and have a, a a fluid restriction or fluid allowance, as I like to think of it is drinking more, isn't, isn't necessarily going to be helpful. Drinking past your fluid allowance, isn't going to be beneficial for you. If you don't have a restriction, and you can drink more than just making sure you're getting enough water to help flush everything through you, the water, the water is the roadway. Okay. I mean, cars, we, we drive on roads for most of us, some people four wheel, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's fun. But uh, yeah, but in this case, you know, the majority of traffic needs a road, right? Mm-hmm. And the water is the road for us. Uh, uh, more than 60% of, of our needs are based off of our water or hydration. So we have to make sure we're getting enough water to help get things through. When we make urine, we need that water because the urine is what is bringing out some of those toxins and, and the buildup to prevent it from staying collected. So that's my number one tip would be to make sure that you are adequately hydrated, that you are not, um, you're not going through, I would say like huge gulps to like nothing at all. And then drinking a lot and like try to make it as consistent as possible throughout the day. That's something I talk with a lot of my clients about is having kind of a a hydration schedule. We talk about how to mark out the the hours of the day of when you should be at, you know, at noon, how much water should you have by noon, things like that. It's really, really helpful. Yeah. So I always have, usually it's this water bottle with me. I have several of them. I love this one because it's big and it holds 52 ounces and I just sip it all day long and then when it's time to refill it, I fill it up. Um, <clears throat> I fill it up. I add some lemon juice, give it a little bit of flavor. And then I actually throw it in the freezer until I'm thirsty and that gets it cold. So mm-hmm. then when I'm ready, it might be 20 minutes later to take a sip. I grab it out of the freezer and now it's nice and cold. 
And everywhere I go, I always have either that bottle with me or I bring water with me and I just sip it slowly all day long. I get plenty of water. And like many kidney patients, I have high blood pressure. I got to get that stuff under control. And water is one of the things, getting the right amount of water, not too much, is important in managing your blood pressure. So don't think, oh, I'm just going to drink three gallons a day and that's going to help flush out my kidneys and, and whatever the disease is, it's going to get peed away. That's not how it works. So mm -hmm. you don't want too much, uh, but that's, that's great. First tip, stay properly hydrated. What else can we do to help our kidneys? Well, I think another one is um, probably pretty obvious, but oftentimes overlooked because it is so it's spoken and, and addressed so much. And that's just really focusing on eating more fruits and vegetables. Even with kidney issues, it's still important that we get a variety of nutrients in our diet and everyone's potassium needs will be different. If there's potassium restriction, that could be different for you. But you want to be sure that you are getting a variety of nutrients, different colors, really. Think about different colors throughout the day, throughout the week. You don't have to hit every single color every single day. Our body is like a bank, right? We're, we're putting things in and they're being stored. So, you know, just have that variety. I only laugh different. because I haven't been exercising the last few months and I'm storing up a lot of it. <laughs> uh, so now I have something new to tell my wife. I'm not getting fat. I'm just banking it for later. You're building up the savings account. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that is really, that's essentially it though, right? If you think about everything we're putting in, it's you either spend it or you save it. Mm -hmm. And in this case, our body is really good. At, even with kidney issues, it's, it's really good at, at balancing these things out and taking care of us. Our bodies are very resilient. So make sure you're getting fruits and vegetables through the day. Start with aiming for at least a serving of fruit and two servings of vegetable a day or whatever that goal that is for you. Build that consistency. And then once you become really comfortable and, oh, I can eat like hands down, I have no problem with fruit or hands down, I have no problem with vegetables, start going on increasing that. And you can customize it. If you need to focus on low potassium, there's plenty of low potassium fruits and vegetables that you can use. But continue to work on in increasing that variety and that uh, those amounts of fruits and vegetables in your diet so that you can have a lot of different nutri nutrients available to your body. And that will really support your cell health. Yeah. And a few people are asking about like, hey, what are some examples of things to eat? And I just remind me, Jen has an awesome Facebook group. You guys need to go. If you have not joined it yet, it is free to join it's called plant powered kidneys is that right yes yep. i got it right usually i have it up on the screen so i can remember it go search for it on facebook join it jen does all sorts of great stuff she does videos there including my personal favorite cooking videos and somebody i can't remember her name for like the last two days has just been posting all sorts of awesome meals that she made that look yeah like they came from some super duper high end fancy restaurant. They look amazing. And I told her, I said, send me the recipe for one of them. I'm going to try it this weekend and we're going to see if I nailed it or if I fail it. <laughs> I'll take a picture of what I come up with and see how it looks compared to hers. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, we sure have some great members in that group that are um, really so supportive. And I am so proud. And I tell them too all the time in the group. You know, I'm just so proud about how much that group is growing and how yep. everybody is so positive and supporting and encouraging and sharing all these great food pictures to give more ideas, sharing tips about how to modify and make tweaks when you need to. Yes. It, it is really, really a wonderful group. And I'm so proud of everybody, uh, everybody that is there to just kind of learn more about eating plant-based for kidneys. And this falls right into a question that someone asked, can you still eat fruit if you're diabetic? Oh my goodness, absolutely. Fruit is... I, I, I feel bad for fruit. Fruit is the the poor, <laughs> the poor character of the show that like everybody thinks is just causing problems and he's just there to do good and to help people. And you, you know what I'm talking about? Like I'm trying, yep. I can't even think about like a specific character exa exactly, but 
But really, fruit, there are so many benefits. I mean, if you think about the berries, the antioxidants in berries, you think about the fiber, the prebiotics that are in fruits, there is so many benefits to fruit. And oftentimes the concern with blood sugar issues when it comes to fruit is thinking that it's going to skyrocket your sugars. And if you are eating just fruit, if you're eating a high sugar fruit like mango um, or papaya or sometimes watermelon, that may cause a, a jump in your blood sugars. But a simple fix to that is making it part of your meal rather than an individual snack. So making sure that it's part of something that has some more fiber, that has maybe some protein to it, healthy fats, uh, that will really, really help in balancing out the blood sugars. And you can still get the benefits from the fruit as well. Plus, it's, you know, to cut out a whole category like that is for fruits, especially you talk about plant based diet, you know, yeah. plants, fruits, that's a big part. And for those of you that also ask, you know, if you're diabetic, when Jen does these videos on her Facebook page, and it's a private group, but everyone is, is allowed to join it, uh, she talks about a few things like change this, change that, and other people have tips like, oh, I'm diabetic, I swap this for this, or I don't use this. So you can learn how to take something and maybe make it fit more of a diabetic diet. And what's really cool about the kidney community there, as well as on Dad Vice TV on the messages, like, like here, we support each other and we help each other and give tips and recommendations. Hey, here's how I tweaked it. Because variety is so important to our food so we don't get stuck eating the same things and getting um, bored of them. And then all of a sudden seeing that cupcake which let me tell you something, my wife bought a big old thing of gigantic cupcakes with so much icing on the top and sprinkles. And they're sitting there in a big old fancy glass thing in the kitchen when I walk by, just tempting me. But, yeah. but we need that variety so we don't get tempted by those things. I thought about it last wow. night. I was like, I could just eat one of them. What's it going to do? But one mm -hmm. leads to two leads to half a box of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's definitely where it's time to be careful. Yeah, um, let's see. I'm looking at the comments right here to make sure. I thought I had something else. Oh, someone had asked about eating, and this is a great question right here, about eating oranges and bananas. A lot of times, you guys, you go on some of these Facebook groups and they say, no, stay away. Big old red signs. They're like, don't even touch an avocado. You even look at it, it seems like it'll shoot your potassium. But you can make those kinds of things fit your diet. The secret, somebody tell me in the chat, what is the secret to making bananas, avocados, oranges fit into your diet? There's one or two words, which I always say, which is the secret. I want to see if someone types it in there. Now, there's about a 30-second delay, Jen, between us <laughs> talking and them hearing it. So I've got to ramble a little bit right. to give them well, I time thinking, to put it in there. I mean, I'm thinking for for those that have watched our show before and have heard us talk about this, there's got you've got to know this. Like There uh -huh. are people out there that know this answer. Right off the bat, they know exactly how to do it. Eggs. There and it so is. We've got the answer, and it is correct. Portion control. Yes, absolutely. It always matters. That portion is what tells <laughs> you how it can fit into your diet. The screen Whether is just blowing up with portion control. Yay! Good. And portion Good. size. Awesome, everybody. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, really, you can. Really happy. And it's amazing. You can actually eat almost anything as long as you don't overdo the portions. So you want a banana? There's a way to make a banana fit in your diet. And you know, it depends on each of us where we are in our labs. Uh, but it's it's not that difficult to make something you want fit into a renal diet to keep you happy and enjoying it. Now. The, my old days of going to McDonald's and getting two Big Macs for five bucks and just plowing through those things as a snack, that's not going to happen on a renal diet. Um, you know, there's the, the, if I wanted a Big Mac, as someone had mentioned in here earlier, Jen didn't see that. Someone had mentioned they did eat a Big Mac. 
but I'm jealous. Uh, it sounds good. Uh, your portion would be pretty small. You're going to cut that thing up like a pizza. It'd be a pretty small portion to where it's just not worth it. You're like, ah, I'd rather have this other bigger thing there. But, oh, I'm right. so excited people got portion control. We don't want to eliminate stuff from our diet and say, no, no, no. Just because we're afraid of potassium that may be in it because it's an avocado, an orange, or a banana. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's absolutely something you could. And if you like it, you should include it in your diet. I mean, just because we're talking about these things to say, yes, you can have them, don't, don't feel like any of this is necessarily required. I mean, we definitely want fruits and vegetables, but most importantly, I want you to include fruits and vegetables that you enjoy. Don't Food and our diet should not become an obligation but really it should be thinking of how we're fueling our bodies and how we're taking care of our health and our kidneys so that we can continue to do the things that we enjoy doing or maybe do something that we haven't been able to do but we want to do. Mm -hmm. And that's where a big part of the right nutrition can make such a huge difference in your life. Yep, and we have a great question here. I've seen this one before in the past and we never got it around to answering it. Uh, Here's someone who makes fruit smoothies, but they have an allergy to bananas. Are there things you suggest that they could use instead of banana for the thickness in a smoothie? Oh, I see I have... you do. I can tell in your eyes already. You got some good. <laughs> okay. So don't call me crazy. All right. Know that I'm a dietitian, but frozen cauliflower. Cauliflower isn't everything anymore. It seems like it could do all sorts of stuff. Yeah. I've so never tried that. Cauliflower is a really great way to add some more bulk to something like a smoothie. And the great thing is that it's lower in potassium. So not only are we talking here about that allergy to bananas, but mm -hmm. if you want to have something like a smoothie, a fruit and vegetable drink, adding some cauliflower to that can add more volume. So frozen cauliflower works really well. Yeah. Oh, and here's the and it's so neutral. Oh, very good. And here's what I want to I want to have you address just because I know the answer and I don't want this person to be avoiding something when they don't have to. Someone said, I saw it on Facebook, which is always a sign to me if I if I hear that. I saw on Facebook no olive oil. What's your response to that? I actually, uh, I've had this question come up a few times recently, in fact, um, in my, my group program, I do a plant powered kidneys. It's a, it's a private group program and we go through six weeks of learning about, uh, a good renal diet, plant-based diet. And there's been some people in that group that have been asking about, uh, olive oil and I, it's another one of those sidekicks in the show who's just trying to help out, just means to do well, but somehow has a bad reputation because people are spreading all of these scary thoughts and scary concepts out there. And again, you know, we need to look at the evidence and there's not evidence to say that eliminating oil is going to be helpful with, for kidney issues, especially again, we can't think about it in a black or white sense of mm -hmm. all or none. So oil is something as a fat, there's heart healthy oils and olive oil is an example of one of those, but a little goes a long way. So we need to think of it in the sense of, yes, you can include it in your diet, but don't go crazy with it. Use it like a garnish. Use it in small amounts. Um, olive oil, I definitely recommend for lower to no cooking because it's a very a much lighter type of oil. So uh, for a cooking, I would a cooking oil, I would recommend um, avocado oil or canola oil. Those ones stand higher temperatures a little bit better. And for non-cooking additional uh, flavor, sesame oil is a great one to add at the end as a really, really good flavor punch. No yep. salt, just that sesame oil. Yep. Um, and I'm going to jump to a few more of these questions. We've got a lot of good ones here. Um, good. Joan, I, I think hope, this, Yep, go ahead. I was going to say, I hope that people, um, you know, the, the kidney detoxing, kidney cleanse oh. conversation... <laughs> Um, you know, there's still, I want to make sure that we address everything there and yep. that people don't have any other questions. Um, if you're asking about specific kinds, you know, you can ask us and we can kind of pull something up and let you know, but really the bottom line for those cleanses is don't trust what you read 
assume that someone's looking to make money from something like that. If there was something in fact that did really provide amazing kidney health results for people with kidney issues, we, James and I we said we would be shouting it from the rooftops. It mm-hmm. would be all over the place. That would be the thing that we would address every single week. Uh, <laughs> I mean, trust, trust us, we would be pushing it. So if there was really something out there that truly did what it's supposed to claim. Yeah. What it claims. We would, yeah. Yeah. We would be talking about it a lot. Yeah, and the big takeaway on the kidney cleanse that I found while reading everything I could find over the weekend, um, and then Joan, we're going to get to your question right after this, and you taking a sip reminded me of it. Uh, What I discovered was the few doctors that were on board with it, what they said were the things you said. Eat healthy, stay hydrated, don't take extra stuff you don't need. It's, yeah. it's what we're doing naturally on a renal diet. Now, if, if you know, if you found me three years ago, standing at a buffet, you know, it would have seemed like, oh, I can't do that. I can't eat more fruits and vegetables and drink more water. Oh, it ain't going to happen. Um, give me my Dr. Pepper. But now, mm. you know, I'm on my renal diet from what I've found, what I found, that's what you need to do. To be good to your kidneys. So in a way, that is your kidney cleanse. Stick to your diet and stay hydrated. Mm -hmm. And Joan asked, is it safe to drink tea as part of your hydration? Uh, Well, first of all, it depends on the kind of tea. Like we were saying before, uh, the nettle tea, some of those herbal teas are not recommended. Uh, I know another common one I've heard of that people say, oh, this is supposed to be good for your kidneys is dandelion tea. Oh. And that, I, yeah, number one, that doesn't sound very pleasant. Um, I tried and- it. I, I used it when I had excessive fluid problems because yeah. it is an extreme, um, makes you pee diuretic. a bunch. Yeah, diuretic. Yeah, the diuretic. That's the word. Mm-hmm. Well, oh, my God, that stuff tasted awful. And yeah. <laughs> And my daughter's like, when I told her how much, she was like, I'm going to take your credit card away if you keep buying stuff on Amazon without talking to me. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, and not to mention, you know, that in this example, dandelion has potassium in it. Mm -hmm. And I've had clients in the past who will have a high potassium level because they take a supplement or a tea, something like that. Uh, If you think about, we've talked about like uh, leaching potatoes before, how you pull the potassium out. You pull the potassium out from the hot water. The tea, it's the same thing, right? Except for you're you're pulling those nutrients out from the tea bag into the water. And they drink in the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're drinking the yes, potassium. Exactly. So the <laughs> Yeah. So it's like if you drank the potato water, like what's the point of leaching it if you're yeah. just gonna go back and drink all of it? So keep in mind, be really, really careful about herbal teas in particular. I mean, just like green tea, black tea, um, chai, rebos, there's a lot of great teas out there that you absolutely can use. And those can be counted as part of your hydration for your day. So um, especially if it's something that's routine, if it's something that's consistent for you, then your body is uh, basically used to it. And so even like coffee, People say, oh, coffee's kind of a diuretic. But if you have a cup of coffee a day, then your body is adjusted to it. And mm-hmm. it's not necessarily going to be as diuretic inducing as compared to somebody who's not typically drinking coffee and they are experiencing more diuretic effects from that. So you can have some teas. Um, I mean, my favorite, like I have really, really fond memories of my dad making the big big jars of sun tea. Oh yes. My mom still does it. Yeah. Big yeah. jars, so, all the tea bags hanging off the end, big old pickle yep. jar. Yeah. Put the exactly. lid on, set it out there. Except my mom pretty much probably starts with a bag of sugar. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's sun sweet tea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's different. I, we never added sugar to our tea. It was always, it was always unsweetened and that's how I got used to it. And, uh, but yeah, it's like something like that is very, very simple. And, um, you know, the black tea and green tea, I think those are really good go-tos. So something like that, just basic. Don't think, don't think it has to be super creative or, or anything like that. It's just, just basic. Yep. All right. So can you 
chat for a while. I got to take care of a little thing right here. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I hope so. I think my internet's been really shaky today. Let me switch um, this over to you while I take care of this little problem real quick. Got a little thing that popped okay. up over here. Yeah. So I will speak again a little bit more on the kidney cleanses, kidney detoxes, like that. Um, when you look something up online, Again, make sure you're checking the references, looking for the actual science and research behind it. Another subtopic related to these uh, supplements and other things that you can use, I've heard that's kind of common and you know, maybe or maybe not we'll have some comments about this, but I've heard people talking about ingesting essential oils, like Ooh. the kinds that you put, in, uh, you put in like a, not a humidifier, but an infuser, diffuser, there we go, a diffuser. And people say, oh, I add this to my food. But just so you know, those things are not meant to be ingested. So, uh, you know, people can get sick from taking something like that. And if you have compromised kidney health, you're at a higher risk of having more complications from doing something like that. So when you look at these different companies, um, I know that there's, I, I don't want to give, somebody asked me on Instagram about the, I think it's called Arbon. The Arbon products. I haven't heard of them. Yeah, it's um, think of it as the um, oh, shoot, what is it? The Tupperware of 2020, where like someone will go or Mary Kay, um, or Avon of 2020, basically, mm -hmm. where someone gets a bunch of supplies and they will go out and they will sell it to their friends, their family. They do a little a little show or example or whatever. They sell a lot of their own products, but it's it's a, a kind of a pyramid scheme. So it's where you would have somebody work under you and then they would sell and then you get a percent of their profits. And it's very much, um, it's, it's very much like the people at the top get the money, the really get the money. And then the people that are going out there and doing all this work, they actually have to pay to sell the product. So anyway, um, I know that this company in particular does sell, um, supplements and things that are promoted as detoxing and cleansing, um, which, Again, be really, really careful. Be really careful about anything that you come across that gives any kind of promise or even even hints at saying, oh, it'll fix this, it'll fix that, it will take care of this. Usually they'll, they might use a verbiage like it'll support this health, it'll support this, it'll support that because it's saying like, oh, it could, it could take care of this a little bit or it could, it could just kind of be there to help, but it's not going to cure it's not going to reverse it's not going to cleanse if it cleanses anything it just means you're going to the bathroom a lot more and that is again not very healthy nor is it safe yep and a lot of those will cite some study they'll link to it and if you read the study it was a small group of specific people with an exact specific situation and they're extrapolating something that really isn't there when the results were were more more study needs to be done or something like yeah. that or a larger group yeah. needs to be sample size i technically or it was on animals and not even yeah people. i technically you could do a one person study of me and look at what i ate where i got and said boom there it is that's all you guys yep. got to do no dialysis ever needed for the rest of the world we're all good that ain't how it is there is mm -hmm. so much uniqueness about my situation and there's also, I believe, some luck involved. Um, and I just happened to catch things and was able to start improving things. And you can't just take the one off and run with it and say, that's the proof. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly the case. So keep in mind that a lot of this stuff is very generalized or the information they're pulling from is from a person. Mm -hmm. And we know as human beings, we are all different. Everybody, even if you, even we've talked about this, I think even last week, even if you talk with somebody else who has the exact same stage kidney disease, even the same cause, there are still other factors that are affecting you as an individual compared to them as an individual. So yep. I, I mean, sometimes I wish it was as simple to say, this is what it is for everybody because that would solve a lot of issues, right? But we have to look at the individual. We can take some components and understand some things uh, you know, talking about potassium, talking about phosphorus, talking about sodium, but really at the end of the day, it's an individual approach. Yep. Very good. Now we are coming close to the top of the hour. 
about 15 minutes away, and I'm going to try to do a very good job of not going <laughs> over, because I know you have a client right yeah. after this. Um, yeah, I've got a busy day today. Yeah, let me look through here and see what questions we have that we might be able to fit in. Um, Donna is saying, I drink ginger pineapple and lemon. Is this okay? Ooh, that sounds good. Yeah, um, if, if it is, if you look at the ingredients and it doesn't have like a list of herbal things. So again, you know, we always talk about look at the ingredients, look at what's actually in the food, the drink, the item. If there's not a huge list of all this other stuff, I think that could be really great. Um, what's the name of that brand of, of, um, there's one that, oh, it starts an S doesn't it? They're in all the kidney walks. Celestial, Celestial, right? I can't yes, remember. Yes. Celestial seasonings. Is that what so it is? If, yeah. Yeah. Celestial seasonings is at least for me here, that is like a big time, uh, that is a big time brand when I'm looking at different teas. So you can look at different types of teas that do have something like, um, that are, I'm, I'm pulling it up some of the examples right now. Like they have an herbal tea that's citrus sunrise. And in this example, you look at the ingredients and rose hips, orange peel, orange, hibiscus, blackberry. I like that you can, I like that you can pronounce all of those. When I start looking at ingredients and it sounds like some chemistry set, I'm like, no. Yeah. I <laughs> like, mean, that that at times can be kind of like a, well, wait a minute, what exactly is all this stuff? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the longer the longer the list, the more you just have to be a little kind of cautious about it. Um, but uh, some of the herbal teas out there, like they're, um, I'm looking now at their fruit tea sampler, and it's herbal teas that are, that are using just pieces of fruit and hibiscus, which is fine, um, using flavors of berries and very, very like natural things. And when I say natural, I mean like you could go to the store and you could find this. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, it's going to be a little bit harder for me to go to the store and find nettle or find, um, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones like the penny Royal or cat's claw or these, these other herbal things that are very things we need to be cautious about. So long story short, Something that's a simple herbal tea like chamomile or the lemon or something like that is going to be much better. But you can always you can always check with your doctor. You can always take a picture of yep. the ingredients. You can sometimes uh, depending on your medical clinic, whoever you're seeing, sometimes they might have like a client portal. You can send a chat message to, send a picture, or just type out like, "Is this tea okay?" You. you always get it verified and if there's any doubt in your mind that you're not sure you should ask it's much yep. much better to be safe than sorry exactly and speaking of safe being safe but not sorry uh, there's a question here i think it's been asked twice and i definitely want to jump on it because it's a very big no no uh, somebody has asked and they saw it on youtube it's just like saying i saw it on facebook or I looked it up online. Dr. Google told me. We know. You already know the answer is this is bad when it starts out that way. <clears throat> baking soda. Taking baking soda, mixing it in water and drink. Okay, guys. There are a lot of people out there who make these videos that say it will cure your kidneys. It'll restore them, rebuild them, something like mm -hmm. that. They all are doing it for clicks to get ads to run. There is nothing there for you. They are taking a tiny little bit of data that some patients are prescribed uh, sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda, in tablets, measured tablets, at the very end of, of, of their kidneys function, you know, the really low ends, for a specific reason, because your body doesn't have enough of it. Their doctor's prescribing it to help slow down the continued loss of kidney function. It does not restore kidneys. It does not fix it. And if you're grabbing a box of baking soda and you're scooping it out, you are getting so much sodium. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. You're doing harm to yourself. Do not try that. Those people are scamming you. It does mm -hmm. not work. There is no, never, never self prescribe anything, but there is yeah. nothing behind that. They're taking a little bit of real evidence 
of something that is used to slow down the final bits of your declining kidney, just to slow it down a little bit. Uh, and they're tricking you guys or fooling you, thinking that it's going to help. And they tell you, oh, I have a friend whose uncle's cousin's former roommate's classmate did it and it fixed his kidneys. His GFR, it went up to 500 or something like that. These are all lies. Okay, they're just mm -hmm. making stuff up. Um, don't be drinking baking soda. <laughs> yeah, and, and you should always, when you have a question or concern about that, if you really, because like James said, there is some, there is some evidence about that for some people that it can help, not everybody. And again, it's prescribed. Therefore, since it is a prescription path for that solution, you should be talking with your doctor about that. You should be asking them, should I be taking sodium bicarbonate? Is that something I need to have right now? And they'll look at your labs. They'll look at your bicarbonate level and they will let you know if that's something that you should be taking. If you take this and it is not prescribed and not monitored, you risk, um, so we're, we're looking at, in this sense, correcting what's called metabolic acidosis. You risk going to the alkalosis side, and it, it's it's trading one problem for another. And yeah. again, that sodium content, it's half a day's worth of sodium per teaspoon. Mm -hmm. And some people are, are taking multiple teaspoons, tablespoons, like so much of that. And we yeah, all and it's, know and it's not that you're so going from it's not that you're going from one extreme to the other. If you don't need it, you don't have a problem. You take it, you can have a problem. Exactly. Exactly. You're, yeah. So so be careful. Anything you find, even on my channel, you see something like, oh, James did it. You gotta talk to your doctor, gotta talk to your renal mm -hmm. dietitian, see if it's right for you. But I've seen that one pop up here a lot about drinking, you know, adding baking soda. I even had someone, it's been a couple months. It was this calendar year, 2020, that they said they sit there and they watch Netflix and they eat baking soda. It's like, oh, I could not imagine trying to do that. That's just not good for you. We okay. have another great question up here um, from Candy. Um, thank you for putting it in there again, Candy, because I would have to scroll up and find it. Cause I, I tried to remember where it was up there in all the other comments. She's asking about COVID-19, anything special that kidney patients should do. So I'll, I'll, I'll mention some things that I know of that my doctor, cause I talk to him quite often. As a matter of fact, I was just there last week and I got a bunch of face shields for the whole family. It's pretty much the basic stuff. Um, social distancing washing your hands often, wearing a mask if I can't social distance. And I have a number of different masks because um, they're either too hot or they're not comfortable enough or they hurt my ears or something. Um, the best mask I found were the ones made by Adidas, but they're sold out. I only got six of those for me and my family. They have kids size and adults. Um, but he said, wear a mask, wash, and then I use a face shield if I need to go somewhere um, for work and be closer to somebody. I still have my mask on. I just wear a face shield. Um, he just recommended that for me. There was nothing else because of my kidneys that he recommended. He did tell me if there's anybody who, for some reason decides they want to travel. Like say I had somebody that decided, you know what, I'm going to go to Florida for a week and come back. I should avoid them for a few weeks just to make sure everything's okay. Uh, but that was pretty much just, just follow those guidelines that we've all heard about that can help with everyone at stopping the spread of this. Is there anything you would add to that, Jen? Um, I mean, all of those, I think, are really, really great points. And obviously, we can't say that enough about being careful with yourself, your health, and those around you. Um, there is some newer research that is coming out to look into a possible connection of vitamin D and uh, influenza, COVID. But there needs to be a lot more studies done for it. Again, it's one of those things we took a snapshot of a small amount. And anything when it comes to research needs to be able to be replicated over and over with more people for it to be proven as something that can be effective. And also keep in mind, too, that uh, it, just like the baking soda thing, if there's no problem that needs correction, there's no point in supplementing. 
So you want to talk with your doctor about your vitamin D, talk about how much what, what your levels are at, if you should be supplementing. There are people that can benefit from it, but there's also people that it cannot be beneficial for and that, in fact, it can create issues with your bone health. So be really cognizant of that and always, always, always discuss this with your doctor to make sure if you're supplementing that you're at the right dose for what's appropriate for your labs. Again, it comes back to your labs. Yep. Everything is always what is specific to you. And someone had asked, what is a face shield? I actually just reached and grabbed one of them. Uh, it's actually just a piece of plastic. This one has some memory foam and a thing. Yep. I, I want to make sure the microphone can still hear me. And it just fits <laughs> over and, and, and blocks your face. You can do everything. You can um, go to work. Um, I've had to wear these up to three hours at a time. No problem. This is actually from my doctor who created Henry the Hand. He also created these little portable hand washing units for schools. When the flu breaks out, you take in the classrooms and the kids can wash their hands and stay clean without touching anything. They just use their feet to control mm -hmm. everything. And he's been a, one of the local experts helping all the schools here prepare for the eventual reopening of the schools. And he gives those out, which is great. Um, but when it comes to, you know, the, you know, the, the um, you know, COVID, I talked to him. I try to go talk to him as much as I can. I visited him actually in person for the first time uh, since January last week. And, you know, because I was just like, hey, I'm a little bit worried. We're getting back to school. They're talking about opening. What should I worry about with my kids? Is this something, you know, they pick something up and we got it all discussed and we have very good hand washing here. The schools are doing, or they're planning for some very good things. Um, they'll do what, you know, it'll depend on what, what happens on what mm -hmm. the schools do, but they're going to be very careful, at least around here at the schools. Um, so we are now actually at the top of the hour. <laughs> it always flies by, I swear, every single time. It yeah. always flies by. Let me see. I'm looking one quick one to see. Oh, we got a couple. We got a couple spam bots that are joining our, our chats now. We're getting popular oh, so enough. <laughs> the spam bots want to come in here. That's the sign you know you're reaching a big audience is when they yeah. decide to jump on board too. So we'll do one last question. It just came through. Oh, this person's asking citrus is okay for C CDK or CKD. Hmm. Um, I said CDK because that's where I work, I, well, <laughs> which is just a similar, similar initials. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So in general, yes. Uh, some people might have allergies and tolerances, whatever the case is related to citrus. Um, I will say one that I'm super cautious with is grapefruit because mm. grapefruit is easily interacting with so many types of medication. Especially blood so pressure usually, medications. Yeah. yeah. So uh, grapefruit, I do usually say that's a no-go. And when I uh, when I talk with my clients about like creating meal plans and things like that, I say, please, you know, let's just avoid it. It won't, we got to avoid that. That's not going to be helpful. But, you know, the different oranges, and we've talked about adding lemon to water we talked about lime, you know, while adding that vitamin C to help with iron absorption in your food. So citrus in general is good. But again, if there's something, wherever this came from, wherever this thought of, oh, we can't have it for CKD, did this come from your doctor? Did your doctor say no? And then again, ask why. Why is it not okay? Find out exactly what the reasoning is. If it's something that you pulled it from on, online, then that it goes back to the beginning of our conversation where he said, oh, people have different motives for what they talk about and what they promote or don't promote. So be, you know, cautious about that. And it always will go back to asking your doctor. And hopefully if you can get a dietitian, ask your dietitian. That's going to be really the most helpful. Very good. And I will ask one last question because I know it's been asked a few times in here. Um, any concerns on a plant-based diet um, with gluten? Or is gluten something people should avoid on their renal diet completely? 
Yeah, actually, I love this. So uh, there is some great, interesting research about the potential that gluten is, uh, it's helpful to avoid gluten if you have some of the autoimmune kidney issues. So IgA nephropathy like that. So oftentimes I do encourage people that have an autoimmune type cause. So I'm just saying not, not diabetes or high blood pressure, but something that is internally triggering issues with your kidneys that removing gluten from your diet may be beneficial. So it's something that you want to talk with your dietitian about that you want to really track. We've talked about doing food logs before and really tracking that progress, tracking that for what your labs look like. That is super, super helpful. And it may be beneficial, not for everybody, not always a guarantee, but there's some great research out there that talks about um, going gluten-free can really cut down on the protein leaking in the urine. So definitely something to consider and look into and ask your physician, ask your, your nephrologist, your dietitian, if that's something that should uh, work for you. Very good. All right, we are at the top of the hour. Thank you everyone for being here. We'll be here next Tuesday and the schedule of the topics we'll be discussing or on dadvicetv.com, right there on the homepage. Just scroll down about halfway and you will see the schedule. All right, everybody, thank you so much for being here and we'll see you in the next video.